song. So I'm dog sitting. So it was a little longer drive. We got multiple songs? I listened to a podcast. Oh, which one? Simone Biles was on the Call Her Daddy podcast. Oh, okay. It's a pretty good interview. Okay. Pretty uh bar stool, right? Open. No, no. She Wait. left a long time ago. I, I did not her know bag. that. I did not know that. I Shout out to her name then. though, as I but it was a it, was, it doesn't Alex matter. Cooper. Yeah, Alex Cooper, Call Her Daddy podcast, Simone Biles. It was good. It was good. What was talked about in? Like she what made it about good? The how open she was after the Olympics, where she got the twisties, mm-hmm. and how emotionally awful that was. How she didn't want to come back to America because she thought everybody hated her and everyone would hate her forever. Um, she was just really open about it. Went through her childhood. She had such an interesting just. She always knew she was really, really good at gymnastics. Like, she was built for gymnastics. You know how we have some athletes who come by and they're like, oh, it's kind of amazing I got here. Like, no, she got in the gym and they said, you have the build, you have the skills, let's start training you early. And so she, it erased her childhood to a degree because everything was about being in the gym, everything was about training. And she said, one of the funniest, just small anecdotes, the first time she ever danced with a boy was on Dancing with the Stars. Oh. Like she had never. And how old is she on dancing? With the school? Okay. Yeah. So, but no middle school dances, no high school yeah. dances, no early college experiences. Like everything was gymnastics. Um, she talked about her relationship with uh, her husband. Together. They're still together. Oh, they're the husband. They're still together. They're I married. Missed that. Yes. Okay. I. Uh, she said dealing with the discourse that the internet had about his. His what? What happened? Because remember, he was always like super weird that he pretended like he didn't know who she was before they started dating. Oh, okay. That was the big thing, and the internet hated that. Oh. And now he's they fight about who's the better athlete, and I'm just like, she's Simone Biles. Of course she is the better athlete. What's up, everybody? It is Thursday, April 18th. A Thursday that feels like a Friday because it is our last show of the week. Jessica Benson here from the Grind City Media Studios in Memphis, Tennessee. CJ Hurt behind the glass. Coming up on today's show, another night of NBA play in action to go through. We get Sixers Knicks in the first round. Either the Heat or the Bulls will play. The Celtics will talk all about that. The Queen herself, Teresa Walker, will join us about 20 minutes in. Really excited to talk to her about the dude who did the heart hands to Caitlin Clark yesterday at her press conference. Uh, Caitlin Clark also getting a signature shoe and a big deal with Nike. We're a week away from the NFL draft. The NHL playoffs start this week. And Team Tennessee, the Nashville Predators, are in those NHL playoffs. We'll get to Teresa with all of that. Speaking of drafts, we are drafting elementary school cafeteria foods. There is one clear number one choice. The rest we will see how it all pans out. And then we'll do some theater Thursday. I saw Civil War. I'll give my review, some movie stories throughout the week. We'll end our week. Have a little fun. Let's go. Don't worry, be fluffy world tour. The minute you get into a brand new relationship, like magic, you know who really notices just how happy you are, guys? Other women, not your woman. Look how happy he is. I bet I can change that. Friday, May 10th, FedEx Forum. Get your tickets now at fluffyguy.com. Don't miss a Memphis. Don't worry, be fluffy world tour. Hey Grizzlies fans, after exciting hoops and a lucky night of gaming, where do you rest your head? Look no further than Southland Casino Hotel, proud sponsor of the Memphis Grizzlies. Our high-rise hotel is the epitome of luxury and comfort. Picture this, you've just finished an evening of gaming and dining, so you head on over to one of our 300 rooms to end the night. Choose from standard suite and presidential suite, plus we're pet friendly and offer mobility scooters for rent. It's a seamless experience for everyone. And don't miss the Main Street Exchange, right in the heart of our casino lobby. Whether you're craving a snack or need a souvenir of your stay, we've got you covered. From polo shirts to shot glasses, take a piece of the Southland excitement home with you. So come stay and play at Southland Casino Hotel, where every moment is designed for your enjoyment. Book your hotel stay by calling 833-703-3350 or visit online at southlandcasinohotel.com slash hotel. Guests must be 21 years of age or older to check in at hotel. Must be 21 plus, play responsibly. For help quitting, call 800-522-4700. Let's face it, there's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power on board, a class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator 
and leaves the competition speechless. Ford F-150, official truck of the Grizzlies. Greatness starts here at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Classes full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds. GBWR. Justin Timberlake. I'm bringing sexy back. The Forget Tomorrow World Tour. I can't stop the Live in Memphis. Justin Timberlake. FedEx Forum, Saturday, November 23rd. Get tickets this Thursday at 10 a.m. at LiveNation.com. The brand new single, Selfish, is available to stream and download now. If I get jealous, I can't help it. For more, hit up JustinTimberlake.com. Did I invent this? Loki? Did you? I spent years calling my ex producer, Cowboy Carson, and now Beyonce. She Didn't decides she, she, wants wind? To, she wants to dabble in country, in the genre. Now she's calling her album Cowboy Carter. When she's doing her next concert, That's and right. she says, Hey, my new album's about to come out. Uh, inspired. Cowboy Carter. I inspired just, by The Gary Parish Show. Shout out GP in yeah. Memphis. The Gary Parish Show, live weekdays at 10 a.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Heart Royal Flush Tour 2024, Barracuda. November 14th, FedEx Forum. Baby. A journey through the hits and timeless classics. The iconic band returns with special guests. Jason Bonham's Led Zeppelin Evening. Tickets on sale now at heart-music.com. Heart with Jason Bonham's Led Zeppelin Evening. Produced by AEG Presents. Presents the Jessica Benson Show with CJ Hurt live from the Grind City Media Studios on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. What's up, everybody? Happy Thursday to you. It is our last show of the week, so a Thursday that feels very much like a Friday. Woke up with a little pep in my step. Also, woke up because I didn't stay awake for the second half of the second play-in game last night between the Bulls and the Hawks, although Kobe White was awesome with 42 points, and the Hawks will play the, or excuse me, the Bulls will play the Heat to determine who gets to go play the big bad Celtics. But I felt like the second play-in game last night in the East was the equivalent of, like, the Cheez-Its Bowl. Like a bowl that matters, but it doesn't. Hmm. Maybe Cheez-Its is too high. It is too high. Maybe the Cherubundi Bowl. There we go. Go lower. Are we better with that? Go lower. Do we still have a GoDaddy Bowl? That that would be the Do one. Do we still have a Bad Boy Mowers Bowl? That's the one. That's the one. That's the one. It was Mikey. the Bad Boy Mowers Bowl Who's to play in Are we still mid? doing the Mikey Car Care Bowl? Because that's what it reminded me of. Okay. It felt like a car care bowl where it's like, oh, it's great that these guys are getting to continue to play. I love that for those guys. But this matters. This matters none. It, it doesn't. It does not feel that way. Honestly, watching all four teams play last night, I thought to myself, is one of these teams really going to ultimately down the road of the East beat a team like the Boston Celtics? I just don't know. The Sixers um, heat game at least was a fun game, and the Sixers win it 105-104. Sixers came back down 14, and I will tell you— Still, honestly— Yes. No clue how that happened. I watched Me every either. second. Well, I'll tell no, you how it happened. No clue what I, happened there. You might have missed it. What? I'll tell you how it happened. The game changed. And maybe you were watching without volume, and it was easy to miss if you were watching without volume. But everything changed when the Heat were up 11 with just under seven minutes to play in the third quarter. And Caleb Martin stepped up to the free throw line. And Caleb Martin missed his first free throw. And then this happened. Take a listen to the great call. And the crowd explodes. My, oh, my, it's so easy to make people happy. Yes! 
The great chicken run began, CJ, and as a big chicken show, this felt really important in the context of how it goes because Nicholas Batum was inspired by chicken. He loves chicken. He became the greatest shooter alive when the fine people of Philadelphia earned free chicken and the Sixers outscored the Heat 56 to 45 after Caleb Martin missed two free throws, which when an opponent misses two free throws at Sixers games, the crowd gets free chicken and thus... The Chicken Run was born. Did you ever see the movie Chicken Run? I did. I did see it. This is a pie it. maker. I don't remember anything That's about it. That's the only thing I remember. You remember Robots? Yes. I, I don't remember much about Robots or mm -hmm. Chicken Run, but I know I saw them, them well, both. Well, this is the sequel. That's what happened, though. That's what happened. Not that. Not that, no. no not Nicholas that. Batum was inspired well, by the fans who Batum won happened. free chicken. If he was inspired by the free chicken, shout out to him. He's a Frenchman. Well, I don't think the they, that they do like win. chicken like that. Shockingly, but Batum the Sixers got don't win without Nicholas Batum he got, last night. He got hot, yeah. hot all of a He became the greatest shooter in the world. But that's that's he's done that sure. before. Like Nick Batum is somebody who we know can like stroke it from deep. Right. We know that about him. And I just wasn't expecting him to still be able to do that. Certainly not on that level. But I guess when you're inspired by chicken, like anything is possible. Anything can happen. Especially chicken nuggets, chicken parm, chicken so, pot so, pie. So wait, which which chicken did he did he win? I think it's I don't know. Here it's Chick fil A. So but ours is on makes. Ours is on an N1. Yeah, N1 make you get right. a free, but you got to download the app. Know, Don't get me started on all that. Anyway, started. but like, <laughs> do we know? It can't be very many Chick Fil A's in Philly. I wouldn't think. I have no I idea. Think the Chick Fil A's is just a southern thing. So is no, it? What are you talking about? Chick Fil A is universal. Chick Fil A just got out of no, it did Southeast. not. That Southeast. Is, yes, no, it, it did. did not. When I was in second grade, the first Where? Chick Fil A opened in Highlands Ranch, Colorado, and the line I didn't was get wrapped a -A. around the block. We didn't get a Chick Fil A in Nashville, Clarksville, until I was in college in like 0506. That's insane. I'm I'm sorry. Chick Fil A skipped over Tennessee. It's that Georgia Tennessee rivalry. I don't know what to tell you. There's a Chick Fil A in Times Square. Okay, oh, they, they get, get free, free nuggets. nuggets. They get free Chick Fil A. I too would be inspired okay. by free nuggets. Shout I, out other Jacob. Yes, Nicholas Batum can stroke it from deep, as you would say. But it was his first 20-point game in over a year. And it is pretty wild that in a game with Jimmy Butler and Joel Embiid and Bam Adebayo and <laughs> Tabuis Harris and Tyrese Maxey, uh, Nicholas Batum is the best player on the court. And that is why the Sixers won, because they certainly didn't win, because Tobias Harris got benched. Well, maybe they did win because he got benched with four minutes left in the game. But Joel Embiid was like a scarecrow for... 80% of that game, and I do not know how Joel Embiid is going to make it to the Paris Olympics this summer, although give anyone a baguette and some cheese, and you can be inspired to do some wonderful things in Paris, but he was ineffective. He comes alive late, and it's just his conditioning, did you see when he took the free throw, and he like fell forward? And I know he didn't fall, but it was just like almost an exacerbated moment with him. Like, I am trying so hard. I am working so hard in the playoffs right now. And how many games did he have before he came back? Five? Uh, not, not, a, not, not, not a whole not lot. Not enough. He shouldn't have played those five. He is not healthy. No. Let's, let's be clear. Nobody, again, the caveat with all of these comments going forward, and I'm done saying it after today, okay. nobody is. I don't care about your health. I don't. Okay. He's not healthy. That fall forward. Like, it looked painful. There are moments in that game where he is hunched over, and is is he catching his breath? It, it might be a conditioning thing. No, my man is bent over rubbing his, his knee, knees. trying to rub yeah. out the pain in his knee. Like, that's that's just what it is. I think uh, Stephen A., I caught some of the halftime show, and I feel like it was Stephen A. who brought this up. When it looked like the Heat were about to, they had done the zone switch and looked like they were about to run away with this thing. I think Stephen A. pointed out, hey, they're they're trying to use Joel Embiid mm -hmm. instead of using him as a distraction and having other players get off, right? And it's, you know, when you have a player who can get off like Batum, who we established can stroke from deep, and you have Tyrese Maxey, and you have... You're supposed to have to buy his hairs. But you have these <laughs> other guys on that roster who can light it up. You have to lean on them now. You can't bank on Joel Embiid carrying you through these playoffs. He's just not capable of doing that right now. He isn't. And if that's their game plan going forward, they won't be in this thing for very long because my man is literally holding his knee, grimacing up and down the court 
every single step he takes. Like it's he was missing bunnies. They pointed out, I think Wilbon pointed that out. He's missing layups that he normally wouldn't miss because he doesn't have the lift, right. he doesn't have the explosion. But with the game on the line, with everything, you know, coming, the, the momentum had shifted. It's Batum is, is hitting all those threes. Momentum shifts. It's fourth quarter. Joel B steps right into a three, knocks it down, gives them a, a one-point lead, if I remember correctly. It's like, okay, he's got the, the mental fortitude. He might even have the heart. I think he has the heart. He does not have the body. And we talked about this with Zion. You can throw in Bede, Zion, Anthony Davis is another one, Kawhi Leonard. To me, in this category of, damn, I think that this dude would be – is like really, really good, almost a revolutionary type basketball player. But physically, their bodies just break down at the worst possible time. Yeah. And it looks like Joel's body is, has broken down That's again. Hard, hard to watch. And, and they do advance to play the Knicks. They were so baffled by the zone <laughs> in the first half of that game. My sixth grade basketball team knew how to break a zone better than the Sixers looked in the first half. And I was shocked that Miami went away from the zone in the second half yeah. because it was working so well. I mean, obviously the only thought is, okay, they had half time to adjust, and, but like forced them to prove it because the way they were hot potatoing around the perimeter was – Completely just ineffective. Just not, not smart passes. No. So the, if and you're playing. And then they're getting lead outs and yeah, points you're, in transition. If and, you're playing a zone, you're playing it um, daring the other team to shoot. Like, we don't think you have any shooters. Well, Nick, Nick Batum is shooting the ball pretty well. So maybe they say, hey, he's shooting well. We might not need to go to the zone. But I didn't trust the 76ers to be able to get him the ball in a zone. Mm. The turnovers that they were making, the mistakes that they were making were because, like you said, Jessica, they're just hot potato in the basketball. Yeah. They had no real game plan for that zone. And when you're playing Eric Spolstra, you need to have a game plan for everything because he will throw everything at you. Right. Um, I was shocked that they didn't, but the 76ers went to a zone. And that kind of threw the heat yeah. out of their their rhythm. Well, and the heat were thrown off because, like you said, no one is healthy. Health is a luxury, not a guarantee in the postseason. And now we're talking about Jimmy Butler, who got hurt in the first quarter. He played the whole game, but he was clearly not 100%. Because especially early on, you just you thought to yourself, oh, here we go again. The heat turned the postseason switch on. Jimmy Butler goes Himmy Butler mode. The second the regular season ends, it is time to re-respect the Miami Heat. And he looked so good early. And then he had the weird, awkward thing where Kelly Oubre kind of fell onto him. And he was down for a while. He never left the game. But the video of him walking out of the arena that came out yesterday made me think there is absolutely no way we see Jimmy Butler come the end of this week when they take on the Bulls. And the Bulls are going to be without Alex Caruso, probably. Not officially, but he's doubtful after, once again, last week we had Andre Drummond stealing an alley-oop from a teammate and having one of the worst plays I have ever seen in the game of professional basketball. Last night, Andre Drummond just completely trucked his own teammate. You can't run into your own teammates. He took out Alex Caruso. I heard somebody described him as an oaf, which is also how that Greg Doyle at the Indy Star described himself in his press conference with Caitlin Clark. That's accurate. Andre Drummond was more oafy than Greg Doyle. I well, well, we'll talk to Teresa about well, that language. O oaf is a big dopey dude. Yes. Like Emphasis Lenny. on the dope. Lenny is is a is an is an oaf. Sure. Lenny from of mice, of and, mice men, and men. Right. Great had, literary had reference. To, had to pit the the had to hit him in the dome with it one time. Um, but so Drummond is big. He's not oafy mentally. Oh my god. <laughs> but he's big. Look out. Like that's how an oaf moves. Those are things an oaf does. Doyle might be regular size, but he says the things that oaf say. You can't friendly fire your own teammate. Get out the way! That's a large man. He's not agile. Oh He's just God. not agile. What are you looking at? This is that's a seven footer running straight down your neck. Get once out the way! You're you going him straight coming. out. You're he going just straight stepped out. on his foot. I know. Like that's tough. Apparently, Jimmy Butler's out multiple weeks. So whoever advances Wait, from really, that's what Daniel Greer in the chat said per Shams. Okay. Let's see. All right, we'll find out. That's that's one of listen, it's the postseason. Y'all better y'all got Tyler Hero. There, it just broke. The expectation okay. is Miami's Jimmy Butler will be out multiple weeks. Butler remarkably played the final three quarters last night with what is now feared to be an MCL injury, which I will say, Jimmy Butler is we use this phrase far too often. He's built different. Like that's incredible that he stayed in that game. They do have Tyler Hero. Tyler Hero cannot handle the ball. 
Please. He, he, he's got the same issue. Are the issue. Bulls going to win? No, he's got the same issue that Jalen Brown has where, hey, if you get up into him, if you can pressure him, like, they'll turn the ball over. They'll fumble this thing about. I thought that he had, while he does not dribble the ball well, like you pointed out, he had a really good game only down the stretch. Only down the stretch. Sure. That's when he came to, to life. I think He's the one who he stepped was, uh, backcourt, though, right? Yes. So, yeah. Yes. But that, that mistake aside, I think that he's, he started the game like 5 for 20 going into the fourth quarter. And he ended the fourth quarter. And they were quarter, hunting him defensively, and too. And he ended the fourth quarter pretty well. And that's why you play the zone. Tyler right. Hero can't, like, stay in front <laughs> of people. Him, yeah. um, so, but the, it was like, oh, Tyler Hero's about to take this thing over. And then the backcourt thing happens. Like, ah, that's that's tough. That's rough. They got Bam. They got Hero. Bam's got to be. Sure. That's the, that's the, if that's Bam always been. Bam transforms into aggressive Bam. Just shot me if you've heard this one before. If Bam Adebayo decides to be the biggest, baddest offensive presence on the court, then yeah. It's hard. They need to win. It's hard to do that with a player like Jimmy Butler because that's the biggest, baddest offensive player on the court. Yes. All right. Like that's, that's hard to do. He's not there. Bam is. Like they've got enough to get past the Bulls. It's at home, correct? Yeah. Yeah. They've got enough to get past the Bulls. No, Jimmy. I do question what they do against the Celtics because it's not just. Do you now? Well, listen, I think the Heat with healthy Jimmy beat the Celtics in a seven game yeah, series. We're having, whenever, a, we're having an entirely different conversation. Uh, but without Jimmy and to throw Terry Rozier in there as well, without those two, like what are you offensively? I, and, and without Jimmy, what's your perimeter defense like? You can't just zone up against everybody all the time and expect that to work. It might work against Boston. It would have probably worked against Philly. It's not going to work against everybody else. So I think the Heat are in some some real danger after they beat the Bulls and get to the eight, the like one eight matchup. A sacrificial bad boy mowers bull. It's a little bit better than Bulls Hawks. The Hawks are in straight misery. Maybe we saw the last time Trey Young plays in an Atlanta uniform. I don't know. Maybe, maybe the Hawks, you know, make a push for Clay. Say, hey, hey, Trey, you can play with Clay. Clay, you can play with Trey. Trey and Clay. You don't need to dribble Clay. Trey will just dribble the ball and throw it to That's you. That's Clay's just be, best situation. Just be ready to shoot. Where he can just catch and shoot. Just catch and shoot, Clay. That might be, you know, something that they could look into. Say, hey, we could get him. Nobody plays defense anymore, Jacobs. Get out of here. What is that? What is that? All right, we got to take a quick break. Teresa Walker of the Associated Press. She joins us every Thursday. She is the queen of all sports, and I can't wait to catch up with her after a quick break. Grizzlies fans, turn your stadium excitement into betting action at Southland Casino Hotel. As a proud sponsor of the Memphis Grizzlies, Southland brings you more gaming action than ever before. Step onto our massive casino floor stretching more than two and a half football fields. Slot enthusiasts can enjoy more than 2,300 machines from penny slots to high limits and play the hottest games like Aristocrat, Dollar Storm, Cloverlink, and Lightning Cash. Table game aficionados can feel the thrill of the felt with 50 live table games. From three card to black Jack match, we're ready to deal you in. Plus, don't miss Stadium Gaming for an interactive digital experience. And for high rollers, our high limit room is calling your name. Go big on six high limit blackjack tables or spin one of our 54 high stakes slot machines. Throw in eight delicious dining options and a 300 room high rise hotel, and there's plenty to keep you going. At Southland Casino Hotel, the gaming excitement never stops. Must be 21 plus, play responsibly. For help quitting, call 800 522 4700. Let's face it. There's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power on board, a class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and leaves the competition speechless. Ford F-150, official truck of the Grizzlies. Greatness starts here at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Classes full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GBWR. 
Sauced by Will Smith is taking the championship taste of FedEx Forum. Come enjoy your favorite lineup of sauces on traditional and boneless wings the next time you see the Memphis Grizzlies play. All of your favorite sauces, including the famous Garrick sauce, are now available as you cheer the home team on. Visit Sauced by Will Smith inside FedEx Forum at your next Grizzlies game or come visit us anytime at our location in South Haven, Mississippi. Championship sauce, championship taste. Come get sauced today. Now for a limited time, the new $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps are here at Sonic. Who could deny a crispy chicken tender with bold flavors like hickory barbecue and cheesy Baja? And we can't forget the crisp lettuce and melty cheese to make the perfect bite. Wrap yourself up with some TLC, tender, love, and chicken for only $1.99. Sonic $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps. Tax not included, limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. Are you a healthcare professional looking for a new experience? Look no further than Travel Nurses, Inc. Our extensive network of healthcare facilities across the country offers you the opportunity to discover new destinations while pursuing your passion. We provide competitive compensation, flexible contracts, and dedicated assistance. So join our community of nurses and allied health professionals and start your next adventure today. Visit our website at travelnursesinc.com for more information. Did I invent this, Loki? Did you? I spent years calling my ex producer Cowboy Carson, and now Beyonce. She Since decides she, she wants wind. to. She wants to dabble in country in the genre. Now she's calling her album Cowboy Carter when she's doing her next concert. Right. And she says, "Hey, my new album's about to come out." Uh, inspired, Cowboy Carter, I inspired just, by the Gary Parish Show. Shout out GP in yeah. Memphis. The Gary Parish Show live weekdays at 10 a.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Chris reveals he had Pow call him. Oh, for real? Michael Heisley loved Pow, and he uh, said, "Call Pow," and that Michael Heisley asked Pow. And your brother says, "I remember the conversation." He said, "If I do this, is your brother going to be, you know, a real NBA player?" And he was like, "He will be better than me." Brotherly love. The Chris Vernon Show, presented by Caesar Sportsbook, live weekdays at noon on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. it is time to talk with one of our all-time favorites, Teresa Walker from the Associated Press. Teresa, how's it going? Well, it's going good. I now know, hi, I, I love your shirt there, uh, uh, CJ. I'm just going to say I really was a three-time spelling champ no back in high school. Three yeah, times? Do you remember? Times. Do you remember the words you won with? I remember the word that puts, put me out uh, okay. the, the last time, policy, P-O-E-S-Y. And if I'm remembering, I looked it up as soon as I got eliminated. And I think it's like the study of poetry, but I've slept since then. So don't hold me to that. Okay, we won't ask the definite. Can you use it in a sentence? We will not ask you to do that. <laughs> I have, I, 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 no, I could not. I would have to look it up. And, you know, I'm just saying a lot of things on my plate. So it's like, I'm yeah. just, you know, yeah. But I, dang it, I stepped right into it this morning. It's all right. I know we have a lot to get to. I know the Predators are locked into the NHL postseason. And you're sure, you're sure I shouldn't just let it all ride on the Predators, Teresa? <laughs> uh, I'll say this. The, the team that showed up, they've got the second most goals, I think, average per game okay. in franchise history. So, and, and so much of it came during that point streak. When they flipped that switch, canceling the U2 show at the Sphere – Got, uh, I mean, apparently, talk about your magic button. For every parent worried about whether you should send your kids to bed early as punishment or take some, take the Game Boy away, take the phone away, yes, it works. The Predators went from four points out of the playoff picture to now the first wild card. And I, now we know they're playing Vancouver. They've only met once before. These are the only two teams in the NHL that weren't in the postseason last year. And now they're facing off against each other. Uh, I'll just say this. 2011, that was an electric series. And I think there were five games decided by one goal. So if this series comes close to that, buckle up, baby. And, and I, I just need a schedule so I can plan. Because you know what else is going on next week? 
A little thing and called it, the NFL draft. Just a, just a little thing. Just a week from today. A week from today. And the Titans uh, right now have the number seven pick. And they made a trade last Friday, sending one of their three seventh rounders to Cleveland for a guy who you look at it on paper and it's like, what? He played tight end in college. He was an undrafted by Atlanta, spent his rook, uh, rookie year in San Francisco where ran – Carthon, the new GM of the Titans, second year GM, was working in personnel. And then he spent his last season as a reserve offensive lineman under the Titans' current offensive line coach, Bill Callahan. It's all a flat circle. <laughs> That's how it works. Um, one quick note on the NHL playoffs, since the Grizzlies are not in the NBA playoffs, and that's very sad, uh, we can focus a little bit more on the NHL playoffs. Team Tennessee, I can't because I will be wearing my Colorado Avalanche jersey for the one time that I get to wear it every year and pretend like I'm still a hearty Colorado Avalanche fan. Uh, but for everyone else, the Preds are, are right there for the taking, you know? But, Teresa, so rarely do I get to talk to women in this profession, but I get to talk I hear to you, and I was really excited that you were scheduled to be, yes, on the show today. I can do that to you because we're friends. Um, Close friends, good friends. The Caitlin Clark situation yesterday with her press conference in Indiana, and it produced a, a very awkward moment thanks to Indy Star reporter Greg Doyle. I know some people missed this. It was a very online moment yesterday, so I do want to roll the video uh, for people just so they understand what we are about to talk about. So here's Caitlin Clark and Greg Doyle's exchange yesterday. Hi, Caitlin. Uh, Greg Doyle, Indy Star. Real quick, let me do this. You like, you like that? I like that you're here. I like yeah, that you're here. I do that at my family after every game, so. Okay, it's well, let's cool. start doing it to me and we'll be able to get along just fine. So, question is. Yes! Yes! It is. Everybody, throw your hearts up. Only to a dude. I'm the dude. Throw your hearts up to me. Do it to me. Yeah. Thank you, Teresa. <laughs> Truth. But I love you, CJ. Exactly. And therein and lies I've, a big difference. Um, I've known CJ for a very long time. Right. And you're not in a power dynamic. I would love to know the last time Greg Doyle covered a Indiana Fever press conference or Indiana Fever event. I don't know the answer to that. That's beside the point. Um, here's how I took this, Teresa. And I'll be very curious your reaction. And we have since had an apology tweet from Greg Doyle, an apology yeah. column from Greg Doyle. No, the column especially didn't help me. Any semblance of leeway that I felt was erased by the column. But here was the tweet where he described it as a uniquely oafish way while welcoming Caitlin Clark to Indy, formed his hands into a signature heart. My comment afterward was clumsy and awkward. I sincerely apologize. Please know my heart literally and figuratively was well-intentioned. I will do better. I saw this, Teresa, and I thought to myself, I do not think that he was being purposefully weird. I do not think he was being purposefully sexual. I genuinely think he was doing what many men would do in this situation, and that is handle an introductory press conference of Caitlin Clark, different than he would say a Colts press conference, a Pacers press conference, and this almost infantilization that we do with women or this, oh, it's so cute that you're here. Let's have this little moment. And when I saw that, I was like, of course, of course he would feel the comfort and the desire to do that and throw up the heart and just give such a Cringe is the right word, because I think we all cringed at the very least when we had to encounter that. I had so many. I mean, people were reacting. There's a reason he was trending, okay? Yeah. Uh, the, the head of the Society of Professional Journalists chimed in on that. And here's the thing. As a female, knowing a female reporter asked Peyton Manning, a Paul George, you know, name any other high-profile male athlete that question – and I'd, I'd say the same thing about her that I, that I think about Greg Doyle. I, if I'm the fever, I'm thinking about pulling his credential. Yeah. If I'm his boss, I'm asking him, sitting him down, what were you thinking? I don't get this. I mean, it, it's a professional setting. That, I mean, that's your way of introducing yourself. Just be a professional journalist and say, hi, my name's Greg Doyle. I'm the columnist for the Indianapolis whatever, uh, you know, and then ask a question. Yeah. You know, news conferences are not where you form relationships. 
I, I can't even imagine trying that with Derrick Henry, okay? One, because I'd be roasted as, do you see what the girl did? Right. Yes. We Every female journalist knows that's what it would have gone to. She was hitting on him mm -hmm. or something like that. That's what makes it just the ultimate in cringe. And, and, and yeah, if that person worked for me, I, I don't think I'd send them on that assignment and we'd have a serious conversation. Now that, that column you mentioned, Jess, four yeah. clicks, and I refuse to click on it because mm -hmm. I don't want to read it. I mean, it just, you know, I, I would, I feel that I would get into trouble and be in serious trouble for asking that kind of a question in my position. And if somebody that worked for me asked that question, I wouldn't be hiring them again. Mm -hmm. It's the, it's the same thing when reporters get a urban gentleman up there and start trying to speak slang for some reasons. Like, yo, that's not how you talk. Why, mm -hmm. why do you think it's okay for you to interact with me that way? We, we're professionals in this environment. Until, Teresa, like you brought up, until we get a professional understanding, like a, a friendly professional sort of relationship, there's no reason for that to be how you address me or talk to me. I thought that while he, I think he meant it like you just got just harmlessly, that's not how it, it gets portrayed and that's not how it is. This is a young professional. She wants to be treated as a young professional, not even young. She just wants to be treated as a professional. Right. You're you're doing things to try and make yourself seem like you're in with the 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 thing that's going on, and you've proven that you're not by by doing that gesture and by mm -hmm. the comment afterwards. He's got to be smarter than that. He's got to be better than that. And I would I would hope that he does start covering fever games because they need the the coverage. It's just it just reeks of somebody who got dropped into this situation only because there's a supernova star there with no real knowledge about what's going on in the game that is WNBA. Well, and I think that brings forth the conversation, and I saw this being talked about on social, and, and I do agree with it. Like, are we as an industry, and an industry that is still predominantly male, and I'll take it a step further and say predominantly white male, are we prepared to have these conversations about, to talk about women? And let's take it even outside of sports media, People don't talk about women very well, period. Like, I received an email yesterday, Teresa, that I was telling CJ about. Can you read it? Sure, I will, actually, just Teresa, to make this, sure that this I... this email um, is in, incredible from a known news outlet, correct? Right. Like, it's... it's, it's are you going to say it? Sure. It's the Axios Daily newsletter, um, and you get, like, different versions of... Axio sends you. And this one was headlined Year of the Girl Dad. And it said in a news meeting last week ahead of the NCAA women's final, an Axios colleague asked, Is this the year of the girl dad? It is. And fellas, let's not miss the moment. Why it matters? Women have built tremendous momentum across society, and dads can keep it rolling. Consider these a list of women with girl dads. Beyonce, yeah. Taylor Swift, yeah. Olivia Rodrigo, yeah. Greta Gerwig, Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, even Vice President Kamala Harris. I know none of those women, Teresa, but I guarantee you they have a dad. I guarantee it. Why it matters to me, my three daughters. So father of daughters. But, uh, you know, I got this email and I just thought to myself, oh, here we go. A, a man centering women's stories yet again. And what happened yesterday? Instead of talking about Caitlin Clark and her, and we will talk about her $10 million reported deal with Nike and a signature shoe coming, uh, we're talking about this bozo who decided to have a very inappropriate way of introducing her to his city. Here's the thing. I don't think he does that to a male athlete. No, he and says he does, but he does it. In the column, he said that he would, and I call bullshit. That's the thing. I mean, if, if, because if a, if a guy is sitting there and hears that question, you're probably going to get a, dude, bro, what? Yeah, who are I mean, you? <laughs> it, it's, it's not the, it's not, in these news conferences, you have a tight window, okay? You have people trying to get their questions up, and the follow-up to the coach wasn't any better. With that? <laughs> yes. It's like, just ask her, just and this, I spoke to a journalism college class last week at Lipscomb, and I said, treat athletes the way you'd like to be treated with respect. Right. It like is people. that simple. <laughs> you yeah. know, and, and Caitlin Clark, just, just the question should have been, I think, what he was trying to ask. 
uh, and I still don't, it, the, the heart thing, you know, why, you know, he, she made it clear that that's a family thing. You know, yeah. have that conversation away from the group, okay? When you're trying to start a relationship, and we do try to have relationships with the athletes we cover, sure. to the point that they know who we are, who we work for, and I think she got a clear signal of how he might be covering her uh, at, in Indianapolis. And if I'm her, I don't know if I'm, you know, taking questions from him. Yeah. Indiana could have helped him out by not calling on him, just going to say, or let, giving him a mic. But I'm just going to go to this. Guys, my little tip to you today, treat women uh, just with respect, okay? Don't yeah. tell us to smile more. Don't <laughs> ask us about our emotions when that's not the setting. Give me, give me a hug. Oh, the worst is the give me a hug. Give me a hug. Where my hug at? Give me a hug. Give me a hug. You okay? You nailed a part. And listen, I you have been in the industry for however many years. You are a legend in your own right. You have existed in this space when there were even fewer women to be in it in the first place. I unfortunately did click on his column just because I wanted to be able to reference it and see what was said. And you you pinpoint the part of just treat them like people and that's what it really comes to because even within the column um which i was willing to give a fair shake he went down an avenue that honestly for me triggers me the most of maybe the whole thing where he goes through you know at first it was denial and then it was anger and then i had to accept and, and where he accepted it was when somebody that he respected deeply told him mm -hmm. caitlin clark is a young woman and you don't talk to a young woman the same as you would a young man and to that i push back because i have been in countless situations where male bosses and male colleagues when we have had points of contention have fired back with a i forget you're a woman sometimes and i have to treat you differently and that is the most passive aggressive demeaning way that men can go about dealing with women in the industry that I, i'll be i'll say this i've never gotten that Ugh, and it's the worst you know it is and and it's one of those things that the closest i've come to that in my career was when i was in my first press box covering a high school football game and our columnist walked in and says what are you doing here now the reason we only had two people on the sports staff and i said so so quick today needed somebody to go to the game i raised my hand and that's the only time i've really gotten that kind of thing but just treat people as people. Treat Caitlin Clark the way you treat a Peyton Manning or anybody on the Pacers. She's an athlete. You're wanting to ask her about how she, how hard it is that she works to maintain her greatness. You know, yeah. just simply ask her about the challenge that you know of of trying to always hone her game. Okay, guess what? He never got near that question on the clips that I saw or that yeah. were making the rounds on social. And I had male colleagues reaching out to me going, good Lord, what was going on here? And the colleagues I work with saw it for what it was, a cringe-worthy yeah. moment. Unprofessional, in right. my opinion. All right, let's give a little bit of attention to the bigger story, which was the news late last night that Caitlin Clark is getting a signature shoe, an eight-figure deal with Nike, which a big... Here you go to all of the people who dared to question why she wouldn't return to Iowa and all the NIL money she was leaving behind. I think she's going to be just fine when it comes to that. I think it's tremendous. I think it's awesome. Teresa, I can't see this, though, and not think to myself how on earth a player like Asia Wilson does not have a signature shoe. There is, I, It's complicated because I don't want to take away from Caitlin Clark, and she's already shown such a momentum wave into the coverage of women's basketball, but she's not alone. And the fact that you have Asia Wilson right there, a two-time champion, a two-time MVP, a gold medalist, a five-time All-Star, a New York Times bestseller, and she was tweeting through it a bit last night and wanted to like go out of the way to make sure she put it out there. Like, this isn't about jealousy. There's full support. Everyone can, you know, have their own moments. But why hasn't she gotten hers? And I do think that we're a little late on the pushing that conversation forward. Agreed. I mean, you know, Ja has his shoe, uh, signature shoe line. Uh, why does Asia, and, and I've covered Asia. I covered her when she was at South Carolina and had to double check how to spell her name at a media day one day because it's like, you look at A apostrophe J-A and you're thinking, okay, make sure, I just wanted to know how to say her name, yeah. but she has done so much she is an amazing athlete and yeah. i'm thinking why doesn't she have her own shoe 
I mean, there. I think I saw a tweet last night that she joins uh, Brianna Stewart, and I can't think of the Sabrina other. Sabrina Ionescu. So three. Yes. Yeah. I don't uh, tell me if you look at the picture of three white women standing next to each other, they're and they're the only hoopers. three signature shoes. Well, two of them are in New York, major market. They're <laughs> sure. all hoopers. Indiana, yeah. booming metropolitan Indianapolis market. Indianapolis is a booming market. Just ask Greg Doyle. National market. Well, it's Indiana, which is basketball hoops crazy, and True. and 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 so yes, and Nike and Nike had a relationship with Caitlin Clark while she was at Iowa. Right. For all my bigger point. Is, yeah, I want to let's get Asia. Her, you know, yeah. come on, somebody get on that right now. I mean, you're late, but the idea is that Caitlin Clark had a relationship, and for the people who thought she was taking a pay cut coming to the uh, WNBA, no, oh. let's just no that that's no. And and I you know the talk Monday night, let's get the expansion, let's get those four new teams ASAP by next season. We are the people that were drafted on Monday night, the most watched draft ever. For the WNBA, and yeah, Caitlin was in no part, at no small part, a piece of that. But I did a story on Monday night that I had to struggle with because I am not a fashionista, <laughs> and I was having to look up how to describe Angel Reese's dress. Thank God there wasn't a Janet-like mal wardrobe malfunction because that was backless, mm -hmm. and the deep plunging neckline. It was gorgeous. That there can be, Teresa, there can be no Janet wardrobe misfunction without, without Justin. Justin. As long as a dude is yeah, in there, long as Kim Mulkey, As long covered. as Kim Mulkey was not trying to play the role of the snatch and grab, we were in an okay place. Exactly. And by the way, all the women drafted on Monday night way outdressed any outfit that Kim Mulkey has ever put on in her life. I'm just saying. I mean, uh, you know, look at Car Camilla Cardosa, that tall black uh, uh, red pantsuit yeah i mean they were all styling profiling on the orange carpet and i'll just say this WNBA needs to play catch up it's past due for the league to add teams give these women more games expand the season and create a bigger go to a bigger place they went to the brooklyn academy of music seats a thousand people the orange carpet was live stream thank god it was because it was tiny Grow the rest of your game. Expand the carpet, expand the league, expand the coverage. I'm with you. People are watching, and guess what? We may not know who has next in college ball. We'll know them by this time next year. We sure will. Teresa, as always, thank you so much for joining us. We'll catch up with you next week on Draft Day. Number seven. Number seven. Yes. That is Teresa Walker. She is the best she joins us every thursday you can follow all of her work on twitter and at the associated press her at is at teresa m walker we will take a quick break when we come back we are drafting a very important draft today ourselves cafeteria food from elementary school yes CJ. elementary school cafeteria food we're not talking I think of hospital cafeterias often hospitals not always the most fun place to be uh, sometimes all right, killer all right, cafeteria all right, here we go. food here we go here okay. it is Okay. Production meeting. Okay. <laughs> and stop the music. The director wants us to just do it now. And then, oh, well, the director's fine. the director said do it now. And then when when we do we do that, community comes in, and we just at the end of community we do a longer break before we All go right. into theater Thursday. All Ooh. right. So the director decided that. Other Jacob. Right, uh, this, is other, this a other Jacob, directorship or other a Jacob, dictatorship? I don't know. Other Jacob, big D does, and the D stands for director. <laughs> big D energy, other Jacob The has. O doesn't stand for Orenthal, <laughs> but the D stands for big D director. Yep. Other Jacob. Jacob All right. Let's, let's go. Throw uh -uh. it up. So uh, let me now I have to reset it reset, because we have to I'm set sorry. it for social. We have to make Shout sure that social. it's clippable. Shout out Luke. Shout out Luke. Luke. All right, we are drafting officially on this draft day. If we can get a shot. Okay, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it is draft day, and we are drafting elementary school cafeteria foods. You remember the little printed out menus. You remember your favorite items that you would get rolling through lunch day. That is what we are drafting here today. So let's get a spinner to or see coin, who gets or coin, coin flip, flip. Something. You don't want to give it to me with the kindness of your heart? You, you don't want to give me, me this curse. number one pick? Although I could give it to you. 
I gave you won the chicken draft first round pick, number one overall pick, and wasted mm. it. So I'm not sure if you were going to take. You're probably going to take mixed vegetables one on one. Probably going to take meatloaf one on one. You disgust me. You disgust oh, what is me. This? this is new. Is this a duck race? Are we duck racing? Oh, we're duck, we're duck racing. racing. <laughs> oh, my duck is the Statue of Liberty. That's Let's so go. exciting. Let's go. My duck is bald like me. Come on, CJ. Come on, CJ. Give me go. your tired. Go, duck. You're hungry. No, duck. You're poor. Let's go. Let's go. No, push, come on. Push. No, 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 let's go. That was upsetting. One of one. There's only one option here. Only one there option. There is only one option. The rectangle pizza. And I get all of the rectangle pizzas. I get the cheese pizza. I get the sausage pizza. I get the breakfast pizza. And I get my favorite one of those pizzas, the pepperoni pizza. I need that rectangle pizza in my life. I, if you know where I can find that rectangle pizza, please feel free. Reach out to me. My email address is churt at grizzlies.com. I need to know where that pizza is. DM me. I want that rectangle pizza. Didn't Max's have they that did. pizza I was for a little say, bit? They had Do it for a little Do they still have it? No, but I actually love their pizza. Just unofficial shout out, Max's pepperoni pizza hits on a late night, but they do no longer have the square Money. pizzas. However, oh, the first movement. bar, the first oh. bar that serves this pizza will get my patronage for the rest of time because this is the clear one of one. As you said, every topping it could possibly be, there is no number one pick other than rectangle square pizza. I think I called it square pizza growing up, but you're right. It's more of a rectangular shape. It just depends how your lunch lady cut it into sizing to see if it was a perfect square or indeed a rectangle. Good pick. Excellent pick. With my number one pick, I am going to take Bosco sticks. What's that? They are the Italian cheesy breads. They had different names in different places. Ours were Bosco sticks, some were cheesy sticks, some were breaded cheese sticks, some were Italian sticks, but they are those long strips that you would dip into marinara sauce and they were covered in ooey gooey cheese. And they had the original cheese pull. I don't even know if it was a good cheese pull in reality, but in my brain, you could see the cheese coming up from the Bosco sticks and that is what they are. We did not have those oh, growing up, so but good. I'm aware because kid, I've been at schools and that's been been served as, and I've mm -hmm. been at schools as an adult and I've seen the kids eating those things. I know what you're talking about. And it has the cheese stuffed inside yes. the bread with cheese on top yes. of the bread. And then they wonder why kids need to go to the bathroom <laughs> so much. That amount of cheese would do the opposite effect. It keeps you from well, going to the bathroom. Well, maybe that was strategic. Maybe. Maybe. Eventually. But you're eating that at 10, 15 in the morning, and then you go straight to PE okay. class, get all sweaty and get all greased up. And now it's like, oh, this thing is, this train is a moving. That's a that's an interesting pick. Mm -hmm. um, I will go pancake on a stick. The pancake, you don't know nothing about the pancake on a stick. I could have probably waited. Me. Uh, but that is, like, the, the sausage on a stick, man, then the blueberry pancake on the stick is superb i posed the question on instagram will coleman hit me up was like yo the blueberry pancakes on the stick were one of one in a tier of their own as far as breakfast foods mm -hmm. go in school give me pancake on a stick it's a good one i'm not messing things up this time Are with my sure? number two pick okay i am taking chicken nuggets mm. with catsup not mm. ketchup Mm. Catsup. They okay. would spell it C-A-T-S-U-P on the menu. And chicken nuggets are a staple, as we know my feelings, from the chicken draft. You cannot go wrong with chicken nuggets. Every kid loves chicken nuggets. You get them at lunch. It is a beautiful day. Chicken nuggets with catsup. My issue with the chicken nuggets in the elementary sure. school, they'd only give me like four or five. You had to value them. And I needed, Or trade barter. I, oh, I forgot about the barter system. Mm. Who's trading chicken nuggets? You like, what do you, someone. What do you have on your tray that somebody would give up their chicken nuggets for. Are we doing it for a, a cookie? If you had a lunch bowl. But I'll, no, clearly I don't because I have the chicken nuggets. No, but if like somebody else. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. And you're not, yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Like there's, there's nothing you can do in that situation. And this is how it goes. Give me your chicken nuggets. So you're a bully. Okay, yeah. great. Give me chicken sandwich. The, okay. the, the chicken <laughs> sandwich. The, the thin just chicken the, piece just on the, the bun. Just the circle of chicken we on the bun. Just chicken on a bun chicken, was how we called it. Well, we, it's a sandwich but mm -hmm. the I, it was either this or chicken tenders when when i was in elementary school we didn't have actual tenders 
We didn't have tenders. We only had nuggets. We, we had this, and they would just cut this into strips for us. This chicken sandwich, after a long day of reading, writing, arithmetic, and by long mm -hmm. day, I mean three or four hours because we we get to school at 8. Yep. We're eating at 11. Um, that sandwich hits. That sandwich is, is good. Yes. And I'm not entirely sure that that sandwich was actually made of chicken. I'm pretty sure it might have been like ostrich toenails or something like that. But it was delightful. I love it very I much. I love a good ostrich toenail sandwich. It's my favorite. Okay, next up with my number three pick, I am going to take mashed potatoes and gravy. Yeah. Just a simple scoop of mashed potatoes oh, and a gravy of which I don't know what the gravy was made out of. But it was delightful, and every day was a Thanksgiving kind of day when you got mashed potatoes and gravy in your little lunch tray. Thank you. I wanted that yep. one. I thought I could sneak and can get that one. Can you taste it? I can't. Can you taste because it? Because <laughs> you said ketchup with the chicken nuggets. Mm -hmm. The dipping sauce for the nuggets was, was the, the mashed potatoes. From, yeah. Was just the mashed potatoes. And, and I mm -hmm. needed those. Ah, that threw me off. Mm -hmm. yep, I should have yep. took those instead of the, the pancakes on a stick. That's my bad. Uh, oh, that's, look uh, at that beautiful uh, Look at rounded. Just look how round it is. And they got two scoops. They got two of them. Is this prison or is it a school in America? Oh, my gosh. That looks so good I right now. I would eat it right now. With a styrofoam plate, throw me five or six chicken nuggets over there. Oh, I go mm, to work on yum. that. Oh, what okay. a great pick. I messed up. A real solid role player pick, Jessica. You did. Thank um, you. I will take then. Give me. Ah, am I going fries or am I going tater tots? Like school potatoes are tots. school potatoes are good. All right, that's that's they're like anytime you get a school yeah. potato on your tray, you're excited about getting the well, potato. You need a starch. Be it the mashed potatoes, yes. tots, or fries. Since you took mashed potatoes, I want to make sure I get one of those. I'm gonna take tater tots number four. Yeah. Tater tots number four overall. Yeah, nothing. You know, you get the burger. And then you pair it with the tots, tots. That's good. Get the pizza. And you can pair it with tots. Mm -hmm. That's good as well. Give me the the tater tots. I would have taken tots. I don't. I don't fondly remember fries. Sometimes we would have potato wedges, but even those, I'm not remembering in enough of a way that I would take them. With my fourth pick, I'm going to go with beans and franks. Okay. And beans and franks day always came after Coney Isle hot dog day. So you assume that those those franks are good old fashioned Coney Isle hot dogs, which I think they were just the simple wrapped hot dogs that you got from the freezer section, but God, you cut those little puppies up and you throw them in some beans and they are the magical fruit and you're all tooting together for the rest of the day. And it's a beautiful Gosh, time in the cafeteria. A terrible day of school. I love beans um, and franks. We don't have enough opportunities to eat them as adults. You're an adult. You can do whatever you want. Sure, Don't I make could. Them. I could. Pit. But also, I get what you're saying. Somebody have the courage. Step up for all of us. Pit beanie weenies on the damn menu. Yeah. One of you bars. Pit beanie weenies on the menu. Square pizza and beanie weenies. Pit it on the menu. Not but it hard. was absolutely leftover hot dogs, Jessica. Because that's oh, how yes. you end up getting it. Duh. Uh, just like... I, I thought about, I was going to have to take Salisbury steak. Thankfully, I don't. But all Salisbury steak was was the burgers that didn't get eaten and when it was the a burger gravy day. from the mashed potatoes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, this is controversial. It's my pick. If I got tots and I got a chicken sandwich or I got tots and I got pa pizza, mm -hmm. I got tots with my pancakes on the stick for breakfast. I need something to wash it down. No, not the bag. Give your boy the bag no, chocolate the milk. Bag. Give me the bag don't chocolate milk. Give me that bag. I need that bag of milk. That is the best tasting milk I have ever drank. That chocolate milk specifically. You would, and be careful. You saw how, throw it back up there, because that's how you're supposed to stick that bag. You got to put yes. it in at a nice angle, because you put it in straight up and down. Right. You're going to puncture the bag, the bottom of the bag, and now all your chocolate milk is going to be all over your tray. Same thing with Capri Suns. Like, I no. learned the technique on the Suns from the bags of milk. No, the Capri Sun is too thick no, to go through the No, sometimes bottom. if you were playing around, you wouldn't do it where it was supposed to be oh, going in. Okay. You would go it on the back, like the chocolate milk Oh, you bags. take it from the back? Yeah. Okay, well, listen, never go from the back. Always go from the front. And with the bag milk, there is no back you can poke it from. You can poke it from wherever, wherever just as long want. as you hit it in the right way so you don't get the double puncture. Give me the chocolate milk. Give me pack. the bag chocolate milk, all you haters out there. Okay. I'm glad that you took that because I'm going to go at the end of a nice lunch on a hot day when you had the opportunity <laughs> to get 
the little ice cream with the wooden spoon. It oh. might have been vanilla. It might have been vanilla with chocolate or the strawberry joint. Oh, I like the orange sherbet joint. Oh, we didn't have the orange, orange and sherbet. vanilla we swirl. The that was the best. Oh. And the wooden spoon, just the small taste of wood in your ice cream is exactly how ice cream was meant to be eaten. I try and eat that damn spoon. Mm. Ooh, so I love those good. so much. We don't have them. You, you got like, We have a meeting. We have man. like a big meeting for yeah. work today. If they brought in those little oh, cups do? of ice cream, yeah, we do. Eleven thirty. Oh, I'll see you there. We have those cups of ice cream with the wooden spoons. Yes. You don't need to find a spoon. No. Just, it's right there, Just, attached to the lid. We're always trying to um, Im improve employee morale. That's something everybody's trying to do all <laughs> over spoons. this nation. Give us need. the ice cream with the wooden spoons. Give us the rectangle pizza. Bring in some bag milk uh -huh. and some jungle juice. We'll be straight. You don't bag have to milk, give us a raise. Bag milk and jungle juice sounds like a oh, yeah. yucky listen. in my tummy. <laughs> listen. Make sure the bathrooms are ready to go. Right. Give you it want to know us. what I was going to take what? that I did not? Is what? there anything on your list that your, uh, your other favorites? The boiled burgers. Oh. Our burgers sat in some so type of in water and grease, some type of liquid, oh, God. and that's what it looked <laughs> no. like when you took Ew. the bun off. That's disgusting. But you throw the bun on there, put the cheese on there, you close your eyes, and it was delectable. Oh. It wasn't just edible. Uh, <laughs> Salisbury steak, uh, spaghetti. The spaghetti, spaghetti was, and meatballs was pretty solid. The, the, we didn't have meatballs. Oh. We just had meat in the spaghetti. There's the, the Salisbury, Salisbury steak. steak. Usually with corn. I actually liked the corn. The corn was corn was on my list as yeah. well. I liked the corn. The corn was there. Um, I liked it chicken fried steak day. Mm -hmm. Chicken fried steak was good. We had the mashed potatoes with chicken fried steak usually. Okay. There was a solid, just straight bean and cheese burrito that okay. was very good. I mean, yeah. I'm sure it wasn't, but in my head, it was very, very good. The rich, and then, the rich boy downstairs said lobster tail day. He he, oh, he was a I lobster surf, in elementary. I loved surf and turf before Ooh. nap time. Ooh, what a good Ooh. time. Ooh, you did, did he really? Yes. No. <laughs> Come on, Jessica. What Please. else? I don't know. I would expect it from this guy. Taking yeah. over, telling us when to take breaks. Yeah, Sounds like on, someone man. who grew up on lobster at lunch. It does. Last but not least, specifically French bread pizza. Mm. So we would have square pizza day, mm -hmm. Bosco's or cheese sticks day. Mm -hmm. And then occasionally it was French bread pizza, which See, is like a boat of French bread. Okay. But the bread was always a little too mutt and too crispy. It hurt your teeth at okay. points. But any pizza was good pizza and pizza by the slice day too i didn't even think about that we never we, we, we had a just, lot of pizza we were just rectangles i made a lot of pizza it just hey you come through here here's the rectangles go get it in the chat corn dogs were hit and miss absolutely oh, the dogs. triangle freeze pops those minute made juice pops didn't have those those were so good those were absolutely corn nuggets <laughs> hard ass peanut butter cookies Oh, them cook the hard cookies was good. If you if you had the courage to bite through them joints, they was good. All right, we gotta uh, take let's a read for for social, for social. We gotta read for social. Look at the camera. All right, go. You were first, so go ahead. Oh, uh, I was first. I took uh, with my first pick. I took pizza followed by pancake on a stick, chicken sandwiches, tater tots, and bagged milk. Jessica, mine are Bosco cheesy sticks, chicken nuggets, mashed potatoes and gravy. Beans and Franks, and ice cream with the little wooden spoon. That is our cafeteria elementary school draft, elementary school cafeteria draft. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to do a quick hit with some wonderful members from the Grizzlies community team who have a special event that they're going to help us introduce to you all. Plus, we have Theater Thursday ahead. I saw Civil War. I have a lot of thoughts about it, and apparently everyone else who has seen it does as well. We'll have some other fun movie uh, stories to get through from the week, including a bucket of popcorn that CJ is really excited to talk about. We'll get into all of that after a quick break. Grizzlies fans know it's the team that gives you the edge. Big River Steel does too. That's why we're looking for team members to help us reshape the steel industry for a more sustainable tomorrow. Our edge starts with you at www dot bigriversteel.com backslash join to join our dash team that's www.bigriversteel.com backslash join to join our dash team we know there's only one team you want to watch and valley sports is the place to get your grizzlies experience the comebacks the buzzer beaters the can't miss memphis made moments live Valley Sports keeps the grind going before and after the game, too, with Pete, Brevin, Fish, and Chris on Grizzlies Live. 
Watch Grizzlies basketball all season long with Valley Sports and streaming on the Valley Sports app. Valley Sports, home of the only team you want to watch. There's no substitute for experience, the knowledge gained from having been there before, and the passion to share what you know to make everyone around you better. It's true in basketball. It's true in banking. Grizzlies checking from Pinnacle. Play hard. Bank easy. Open the Grizzlies checking account with at least $100 and a recurring direct deposit by April 30th. And you could receive a $200 direct deposit bonus into your account. Details at grizzliesbanking.com. Member FDIC. There was some sad news coming out of the WWE. Michael Jones, also known as Virgil, passed away. He's a Virginia Union alum, so he graduated from an HBCU. He got his start in Memphis, right? Oh, man, you're absolutely right. He started in Memphis in 1985. Get all of your HBCU sports and culture news by tuning in to HBCU Huddle with CJ Hurt and Mike Wallace. New episodes drop every Thursday on GrindCityMedia.com, YouTube, and Spotify. I think we have the college basketball title futures. UConn's number one. I really like Houston. I'd have them winning it all, but you can't be giving Drake jerseys. What is wrong with you? Maybe the Drake curse is stronger in college basketball. Well, how long has he been up with riding with Kentucky? He wore an Alabama with Kentucky. jersey and Saban retired. The Odds Couple with Rob Fisher, Lang Whitaker, John Roser, and CJ Hurt live Thursdays at 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Let's talk about golf Mm -hmm. in the context of the Masters and everything else going on. What NBA players would you like to play golf with? My number one is Steph Curry. See, like I thought about this, but I don't want to play with Steph Curry because he is good. I want someone I can beat. Who? Charles Barkley. Is he bad at golf? Oh. When we finish this, you, Kelsey, everyone else, just go look for a Charles Barkley swing. IMHO with Lang Whitaker and me, Kelsey Wright Johnson, on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Take your fandom to the next level with the official Grizzlies app. Go all access and behind the scenes. It's got to be heavy defense. That's where it starts for us. Personalized to where you are and who you are. Get easy access to ticketing, the game day guide, and your own app customization right at your fingertips. Upgrade your experience and download the Grizzlies app today. Let's face it. There's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power on board, a class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and leaves the competition speechless. Ford F-150, official truck of the Grizzlies. Greatness starts here at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Classes full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GBWR. LifeCare Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At LifeCare, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at LifeCareAMB.com. It's more fun to be there live to see the Memphis Grizzlies hit the court all season long. From the electricity and FedEx Forum to the highlight reel plays, there's nothing quite like Grizzlies basketball. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies, Ticketmaster gets you in with a huge selection of seats. So get off the couch and into the stands while you still can. Score tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. That's Ticketmaster.com. Today, we have two very special guests on our program, introducing Lem hey. and Lime Hello. for Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Thanks for having us. What is Starry Lemon Lime Soda? It's a crisp, clear burst of lemon lime flavor, and it's caffeine-free. Between us, one of you must be a little more important to Starry than the other. Who is it? We're both important. So we could just as easily be Starry Lime Lemon Soda. No, that doesn't sound right. Oh, I like it. So you saying hip-hop could be hop-hip. Works for me. Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Starry hits different. 
Students, get back to the grind and cheer on your Memphis Grizzlies at FedEx Forum. Don't miss out on our exclusive student ticket program presented by Big River Steel. Get affordable tickets for all the major showdowns, including matchups against the Lakers, 76ers, Nuggets, and more. Sign up today to get alerts about this exclusive ticket deal at grizzlies.com slash students. ahead on today's show that is a Thursday that is a Friday because it's our last of the week we'll do some theater Thursday we're going to talk about Pringles we're going to talk about Gypsy Blanchard's divorce we're going to talk about popcorn buckets that cannot be real but first we have a very special two guests in studio today even though the Memphis Grizzlies season is over the work with the Grizzlies Foundation never stops two women who can tell you all about that are Caroline and Abushery, who are two of our wonderful workers with the Grizzlies Foundation. And coming up is the third annual Mentoring Matters Summit, which is May 2nd through 4th. And so we wanted to get them in studio. Excuse April 25th through 27th. April 25th through 27th. Those dates have changed. <laughs> April 25th through 27th. And we wanted to have the opportunity for Caroline and Abushery to tell you a little bit more about what you can expect with that, how you could get involved. So Caroline, I'll start with you. What does this year's event entail? Yeah, so this year's event has everything for both adults who work with youth and the youth themselves. So the first two days of the summit are virtual sessions designed for mentoring program staff, educators, anyone who works with young people. Um, and we'll have sessions around um, telling the mentoring story, college and career exploration for youth, um, and advocacy and corporate engagement. Uh, the theme of this year's summit is the mentoring puzzle because it's really important that our work is not just isolated to these programs doing the work, um, but to best support our youth, we need local businesses, we need the city, we need everyone collectively engaged to support young people. And then on Saturday, there's an in-person free youth day at Tom Lee Park where kids and their mentors can come out and do a bunch of fun activities together like basketball, music production, painting. Um, and thanks to the Starbucks Foundation, we also have free breakfast and lunch for the kids. We love yeah. free breakfast and we lunch. That's always a win. I will say, People in this city are always trying to think of ways that it can be made better, right? And I am so quick to point out to what we do with Grizzlies mentoring, but also mentoring opportunities around the Mid-South and Memphis in particular. It's the, I don't wanna call it easy because it's hard work, but to be able to get involved in, in children's lives and youth's lives and start those established relationships early and really put in the work on that end. Abushri, I'll ask you, someone who's so inv involved in the mentoring program and within the foundation, you're in the Mentoring Matters shirts. What do you see as the biggest benefit of mentoring and thus events like this upcoming Mentor Matters Summit? Wow, mentoring has so many uh, benefits, not just for um, the mentee, but also for the mentor as well. It helps young people to feel safe and have a person that cares for them, that they can go to, to talk about anything, uh, ultimately. So how your day is going, what your life is like, future plans, uh, really providing a way for them to think about what they're doing now, but also their future potential. And so that's the greatest part of it. Uh, if you're thinking about going to college, if you're thinking about other careers, um, really finding that person that could be your person to talk through things as well. And so the beauty about mentoring and having a mentor is it's not someone that's going to tell you what to do, but really walk alongside by you um, to make sure you have the resources and opportunities uh, as much as possible um, so that you really reach your full potential. And oftentimes mentors learn just as much from mentees. I'm a mentor with the Grizzlies Team Mentor Program. Carolyn, I know you've been involved in mentoring too. Do you have any stories from mentoring that stand out to you in terms of you know relationships formed and just where it's felt like, wow, this is something that's so cool to be a part of? Yeah, so I will say I obviously do a lot of work with uh, mentoring around with Mentor Memphis Grizzlies, but I also serve as a mentor myself. I'm in my second year with uh, Reach Memphis, which helps 
young high school students when it comes to college and career preparation. And so uh, my mentee, I matched with her for two years. So when she's a high school senior um, and getting to basically go through the whole college preparation process with her um, was so meaningful. Cause I think back to when I was at that stage and it was like, okay, how am I making these decisions about where to go? How am I thinking about financial aid? Cause so many students may not know about um, all of these different resources that can help them when it comes to applying for school. Um, and then when she was accepted and she's going to college, she's going to Cornell um, wow. and just getting to help her with that transition. And she's now a freshman there and we talk every couple of weeks and just getting to see her journey from when she was first starting to apply to now she's thriving. She's about to finish her first year of college and just doing great. And um, it's been really meaningful for me. That's so cool. I will say at my last mentoring session, I was told that only old people listen to Beyonce. So that was a uh, rough one for me to go through, but that's what the youth are there for to keep you in a reality check yep. and keep you learning. But truly mentoring is such an awesome, awesome way to get involved in the community. And the fact that everyone has an opportunity to check out the Mentor Matters Summit, the third annual Mentoring Matters Summit of Tennessee. A reminder to everyone, April 25th through 27th, people can learn more at grizzliesfoundation.org slash TN Summit. And if you ever want to get involved in mentoring, shoot me a DM. I am happy to answer and love to get people involved in the project as well. Caroline and Bushery, thank you so much for coming on today thank to help you. spread the word about something so awesome. We will take a quick break. When we come back, we'll do some Theater Thursday movie news on the other side, and we'll wrap up our week here on the show. You heard that, Jacob, a quick break. It's more fun to be there live to see the Memphis Grizzlies hit the court all season long. From the electricity and FedEx Forum to the highlight reel plays, there's nothing quite like Grizzlies basketball. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies, Ticketmaster gets you in with a huge selection of seats. So get off the couch and into the stands while you still can. Score tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. That's Ticketmaster.com. Today, we have two very special guests on our program, introducing Lem hey. and Lime. Hello. For Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Thanks for having us. What is Starry Lemon Lime Soda? It's a crisp, clear burst of lemon lime flavor, and it's caffeine free. Between us, one of you must be a little more important to Starry than the other. Who is it? We're both important. So we could just as easily be Starry Lime Lemon Soda. No, that doesn't sound right. Oh, I like it. So you saying hip hop could be hop hip? Works for me. Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Starry hits different. Students, get back to the grind and cheer on your Memphis Grizzlies at FedEx Forum. Don't miss out on our exclusive student ticket program presented by Big River Steel. Get affordable tickets for all the major showdowns, including matchups against the Lakers, 76ers, Nuggets, and more. Sign up today to get alerts about this exclusive ticket deal at grizzlies.com slash students. you other jacob for such a rapid and quick fire break it is theater thursday i did see a movie this week since the grizzly season came to an end it is movie season for me even though i think we saw this before the grizzly season ended whatever it is civil war which is the new movie by alex garland it's an a24 movie the previews came out months ago and i remember people really focused on the fact that it was a civil war and there were joint forces between texas and california and everyone said how does that that's not a civil war and the director is british and so then people were like that can't be possible he doesn't know what he's talking about i really really liked this movie i have heard a lot of people who really 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 did not like this movie and for one, people have felt that it did not explicitly state sides or create context of what began the Civil War. And I thought there were enough context clues where, for me, it felt fairly obvious. And this is a no-spoilers place, but um, if you go into it and 
think about some of the things that are said early. I think it makes a little bit more sense. It is told through the eyes of photojournalists and Kirsten Dunst plays the lead and she's tremendous and I'm a huge Kirsten Dunst fan and her husband Jesse Plemons pops up and apparently he was asked to fill in on the role with days and he's like yeah sure I got you and I aspire to have that kind of a working relationship with my partner but this movie was captivating like my best way of describing it is even if you might not like it it will be one of the most anxiety riddled movie watching experiences that you have this year. And for some people, that's enough to say, no, nah. I go to movies to be entertained. I go to movies to have fun. I don't want that. At one point, Chris had been gripping my leg for like 20 minutes. What? Yeah. And he had it. And all of a sudden he's like, oh, are you OK? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, 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 I'm fine. Thank you. But I do think, too, I mean, he whispered. And for those who don't know, Chris was a news reporter uh, for many years and studied journalism and at one point wanted to be a war correspondent, actually. Like he had thoughts that perhaps one day because when we were growing up in the you know, post 9-11, early 2000s, we did see a lot of war and interpretation of war on nightly news. And Chris looked at that and said, wow, that sounds fun. I looked at that and said, no, I would never be able to do that in a million years. But I had never really given thought to how war journalism is done. Obviously, the importance of it and capturing images that allow for history to be recorded and thus analyzed. And Kirsten Dunst has a line at some point in the movie fairly about like, you can't, you're not here to tell the story. You're here to take the pictures that allow people to ask questions themselves. You're not here to ask the questions. You're here to take the pictures that make people ask questions. And the danger that those people, and there's an adrenaline junkie side of it and, and the rush and the ego of it all. Um, but I think it's remarkable to think of these photographers, especially, or videographers who put themselves in lines of fire. And I had never thought about how soldiers act to help them in those moments. This is just something that was so, it's like, oh, of course, that's how it works. But working as a team almost, like we're gonna protect you here, follow us, and essentially linking up with armed forces to go and take, and you don't have a gun in your hand, you have a camera in your hand. Um, anyway, I thought it was fascinating. I really hope that we never have a civil war here or a war on American soil because I would be toast. Like, son, put me on a farm and figure it out from there because I'm, I am not built different. I would be built very uh, anxiety riddled. I think that self-awareness is one that um, seeps through most American mm. uh, consciousness, mm -hmm. right? Where whatever you, your thoughts are about how history is taught in school, they do teach some about war and they do teach about the sacrifices specifically in World Wars One and Two, and the the impact that had on not just individuals, but the overall economy and overall comfort level and all of those things as well. Um, and I said all that to say, I don't think any of us want that. I think all of us will come get up on that line and stop just short because none of us want to be uncomfortable. Right. None of us want to make any sort of real sacrifice. We couldn't handle a pandemic. God mm -hmm. forbid some people with guns start marching up and down the street. We're not going to grab it and run or out there. Suicide bombers and, no, and we're not, protests. We're not and, built yeah. for that over here. And so I, I, I do think that it's a, this movie, I hadn't seen it. It feels like though this movie is an apt movie for the, the climate that we're in right now where things are getting a little hot and heavy. And right. this movie can be served to sort of remind you like, hey, okay, this is kind of what it's a movie it's a movie it's not real life but it's a movie this is the difficulties in war imagine how difficult your life will will be should something like that pop off yeah. sort of a cautionary sort of warning type exactly thing. and i was listening to a podcast with the director alex garland and even though it's not really about we do this so often like something has to be one side versus the other and there's so much gray area like someone can be bad and do good things someone can have right intentions and doesn't always go about it the right way and also do bad things and so it's just this notion of remembering like the core messaging is extremism breeds extremism so if there is one area of extremism well that's going to pull out extremism within other communities too and ultimately what happens with extremism war and what happens with war a lot of people die a lot of people die for for what frankly and um it, it's hard i will say the movie's use of music you know i am a sucker for a good soundtrack and a good audio experience while watching a movie i thought this was exemplary like they use say no go by de la soul which is quite a boppy song with a very serious message but it's got a boppy beat to it and they use it after a particularly violent stretch within the movie and it just it's that 
like escapism pulled with, oh my God, what did I just see? But you're moving on and you don't have time. If you're in the middle of a war, I assume that's what it's like too. You don't have time to reflect on the atrocities that you see along the way. You just got to keep going. Just got to keep fighting. Just trying to wake up the next day and do it all over again. So Civil War, it's an interesting experience. If you see it, uh, I really just want to talk about it with anyone who's seen it. Uh, shout out Randall in the chat who <laughs> has talked with me about it thus far. And Chris and I really enjoyed it and just want to sit down and have drinks and talk about Civil War. So sweet. Have you watched anything new? Uh, movies. I can't think of anything that I've watched. Let's get to these popcorn okay. buckets. Let's, let's, let's get keep to the popcorn going, Keep buckets. going through the, the rundown. I don't want to waste people's so time. So we're not going to get to the... Oh. But the popcorn buckets can't be for real is the first thing that's up. Oh, well, <laughs> big D energy. The D stands for director. Jacob I thought is just it stood for take, Deadpool. Take, well, well, in this case. Uh, it stands for something because <laughs> these buckets can't be for real. Now, I think they might be, though, because Deadpool is, for those of you who don't know, it's a superhero movie. There goes one in the bucket. <laughs> it's a superhero movie with, uh, with the protagonist not really being for real. Like he's he's a a constant jokester in a way that is funny, quirky for us watching it, but it's a, a, a pain in the ass to deal with if you're Peter Parker or Logan or if you're Cable, if you're somebody who needs to depend on him, it's a lot to deal with. So let me let me set it real quick, Jessica. But it's not real. <laughs> Good, thank <laughs> okay. God. Thank I just want to be clear. Thank God. But the Doom buckets are real. The Doom popcorn buckets were real, and we all remember how. Um, that bucket looked like, oh, okay, I could put something in this. Sure, absolutely. So the director of Deadpool was like, hey, we've got Deadpool buckets, and here they go, and just started rolling these pictures and these graphics out. I was like, yo, they can't be real. I couldn't find anything to confirm or deny that they were real. So I just threw them in there because they, I know they can't be real. So this is fan art from Boss Logic, but there is going to be a real bucket. There's going so to there's be a real bucket. Confirmed by 20th Century Fox and Ryan Reynolds, there will be a special Deadpool Wolverine bucket. And I do, when we saw Civil War over the weekend, they had special popcorn buckets for, I think they were for Godzilla. Um, and I am such a fan. The Tin Joints. No, they were just normal, but they had decorations on them. Oh, see. And it took me back to we used to we used to be a proper country and had decorative commemorative popcorn buckets, drinks. I remember we had cool fancy at some point. I can't remember there was something you could get a cool straw for your icy. Bring back the experiments or the experience of movie going through popcorn buckets. We have the last Ant-Man movie, they had a popcorn bucket, and that bucket was made out of, like, tin. So we still have that popcorn bucket. We have various movie cups. Like, if it's a cup that's floating around with a movie that we like, we'll grab that cup. I think I know we have a Wonder Woman cup and a couple of the Marvel uh, cups, theme cups as well, because those are reusable. You can keep those and use those. There's a Deadpool bucket. I'm, I know you and Big Bad. Uh, did a draft on movies you're excited to see this year. Yeah. Deadpool, I'm not sure if it made anybody. It made, it made, it Bennett. made Bennett's list. Even I'm, I'm excited to see I'm that. I'm excited to see Deadpool. If there's anything bucket-wise, cup-wise, what have you, I'm going to get it. I just saw Ryan Reynolds' quote about the bucket is it will be intentionally crude and lewd. It is effing awesome. Yes. It will be a Dune 2-like popcorn bucket. Yes. Yep. And that's where the inspiration is coming from. All right. Speaking of inspiration, mm. do you ever eat Pringles at the movies? Yeah, I sure do. Well, Once not at the not at the movies. You got to sneak them in there. We're anti sneaking snacks into the movies. Right. But if I'm sitting on my couch at home, or I'm eating Pringles. If I forgot that I had a. Sometimes Once you pop, the fun don't stop. You know, sometimes I just don't know. My purse is deep. It's like Mary Poppins bag. I don't know what I'm going to find in there, and it might be a can of Pringles. Well, because we wanted to keep this in movie realm. Crocs and Pringles have partnered for the first shoe, I believe, to ever have a snack container within the shoe. So these are Crocs that have a Pringle compartment. This is a partnership officially between Pringles and Crocs. And these are the shoes that you could wear. Would you wear a Pringle can shoe? Yes. Would I wear Crocs? No. They don't really... I mean, they look like Crocs, but they're not Crocky Crocs, you know, like, like those look like elevated Crocs. We have shown so many Crocs on the show this week between the fancy Crocs and now the Pringle Crocs. Who owns Crocs? Who's the big Croc money? 
A lot of crock of Crocs. Do the people own Crocs? I don't know. Who owns Crocs? I, but how, I, also, that doesn't seem real practical. Mm. Your feet are way down <laughs> <not> there. Gonna... <laughs> Your feet are way down there. So I have to stop and bend over every time I want a snack. I have to lift my leg up to my arm every time I want a, a Pringle. That just doesn't seem practical. Yeah, to this kind of reminds me of when I had the original Heelys and you had to physically pull the wheels out. So like oh. you couldn't just, you know, now kids can just like glide. Yes. But the, the original, original, they were like bricks. Mm. They're kind of like those. Yeah. And you had to sit down and physically fiddle with the wheels and pull them out of the heels of the shoe. And then to put them back, you'd have to sit down. Like that's a lot of work. Yeah. No, um, I, I need, like what I need is to be able to press a button that catapults the Pringles from your mouth? my ankle. Yes. And then it's a game. And then it's like, Arf. yeah. Like hungry, hungry hippo status. Give me a now facial we could, we full could, of Pringles. <laughs> we could mix the board game with the shoe, with the Pringles. And now we are corporatizing the hell out of this. Let's go. I'm Fantastic. down with it. Did you find anything over there? You of who owns Crocs? You oh, it's snorted in, a little bit. It's including individual investors and large institutions. Mm -hmm. um, as of January 2024, mutual funds own 31.67% of Crocs, while public companies and individual investors. But the first investor that came up was BlackRock. So I was like, oh. Who? BlackRock. Who? You know BlackRock. But I feel like we have to whisper it. <laughs> Okay, we'll talk off okay, air. We'll, we'll talk off air. Man. We'll talk about the Black Rock off air. Okay, next up, uh, the person that Gypsy's Revenge is based off is getting a divorce. That's how we make it movie news. This was in our WTF segment yesterday. We did not get to it. But Gypsy Blanchard, who is most known for being a victim of Munchausen syndrome via her mother, who she then convinced her boyfriend to kill, and she went to jail for eight years, and she recently was released from prison. She got married while she was in prison, not the boyfriend who killed her mom. This is a different guy. Yes, we have turned Gypsy Blanchard into a celebrity she has a lifetime show that is coming out it feels like everything she does right now is for the plot of her lifetime show and i'm really not sure how i feel about that however we did find out the reasoning behind her divorce and this is fairly recent they separated a few months ago uh, just signed the divorce papers or was presented with the divorce papers maybe last week it is because her husband according to a report from the daily mail was hoarding food which was something that made her uncomfortable because it took her back to her mother. So he would keep old food in the fridge and not throw it away. And he snored. And he became a, quote, furnace when he slept. And if we're getting divorced based on snoring and people turning into furnaces, Chris Luther, watch out. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that you snore. Watch out. I guarantee you snore I don't also. Snore. So you should you should probably watch out. You don't? No. You don't? The wife. The wife Chris snores. Snore, snores and moans and, and talks. We, we discussed. Yes. I've got to land the plane. <laughs> we got to get out of here. Uh, ah. Wasn't she just singing his praises? Wasn't he putting it down yeah. in the sheets? Yeah. Wasn't he slanging it? She kept and that legacy alive. And then she's just like, nope, he's he too food hot. too much. And Ugh. he snores. I will the, say The hoarding it. of the food thing, okay, you've been traumatized. I don't know. All I right. feel like a lot of men struggle to throw things out. Yeah. Just like, So maybe period. she just doesn't need to be married then. Maybe she's not. Maybe she doesn't need to be a celebrity. Uh, hear me out. Well, hear me out. She's well, also getting plastic surgery. She's changing her face, which is cool. You do you. Uh, but that, that was a story. Like, I see a new Gypsy Rose Blanchard uh, story pop up in the pop culture space. Here we go. She's going to be one week. of those. Once a week. All right. I can't wait to see all the different forms of this Can person. You? No, I can't. I like that. That's why I watched Dragon Ball Z. Because Frieza always kept changing forms. No, Cell kept real. changing forms. This isn't real. She's a real person. No, who... she's not. Not anymore. Not anymore. She's not. Not mm. now that we're doing this to her. They're not real once you start doing this. They aren't. And I, I Listen, I, say what you want to about me. None of those types of people are real once we start doing this to them. What this is, I can't really describe it. I can't really say, but I know what this is. Well, we grabbed this person who did this thing that shouldn't make them a celebrity. And because they've got some sort of personality, because they've got some sort of hook yeah. on popular culture, we make them a celebrity. and We make them a thing. She's yeah. going to change a whole lot of stuff. It's weird. I look forward to seeing it. Do you... King makes in the chat ask, would you buy an adult beverage at the movies? I no. do all the time. No. Because I'll my, my when I drink, I, I just want to be left alone. Oh, see, I love to have just a small little buzz. But then next thing I knew I was drinking a glass of Prosecco in zone of interest and it felt very inappropriate. Now I will I will show up 
buzzed. I will show up off my. I think that's how I saw Jurassic Park, mm. the the most recent Jurassic Park. I saw that one. I was like, like, mm. saw Hangover Three also, and that's the mm. issue. Let me take that back. The issue is I saw Hangover Three drunk off my ass mm. and thought it was God's the gift to comedy. To ever exist. Went back and watched it sober, and it was awful. I was like, mm. why was I laughing so hard at this movie? Wasn't that funny? So I don't want I don't want my gotcha. mind tainted by the beverages. I like to just have like a glass of wine or a beer. If it's like a warm summer day, I'll get a beer. But I don't want to be it's just a buzz. You have to be really careful because then otherwise you're spending money on a movie and then you you don't you're remember, not gonna it. remember it. That's how I feel about the Orpheum too. When I go see a show, I love to have a glass of wine. But you don't want to cross that threshold because then you're like, what did I see? What did I spend all that money on? I think there are better uh, forms of buzzes or buzz givers, oh. buzz enhancers that you love could do. Enhancer. I love a buzz enhancer as well um, that you could do mm. to enjoy the gotcha. movies. I think there there are some. I don't want to name them because I haven't done I haven't done any of them. Nancy Reagan taught me not to just say no. <laughs> just, just say no. Me. You feel like you're being a pusher right now. But, but, like some of these really, really bright movies, Thor Ragnarok, for example. Yeah. Not saying that I did anything. But, but if you were, I, I, I'd imagine with a with a with a high of some sort, <laughs> Thor Ragnarok, with how bright the colors are and how everything is moving and the comedy in it, I would assume. That that's a good movie. Movies like that are good to 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 watch. All right, it is nine thirty three. Oh, uh, Avatar. Other Jacob brings Avatar's up Avatar. Avatar's a great one because he's absolutely done it. They should probably drug test that man. Keanu Reeves was cast as Shadow. Oh, I forgot about that. That's all you that's get. That's amazing. Great. Amazing. Jessica, you've got Knuckles as Idris Elba, and you've got Keanu Reeves as Shadow. Oh, this movie's going to be great. This movie. This movie. I wouldn't do it. But some might need to see that with a nice little buzz. A, a, a high, of, if you will. What about the Stormy Daniels documentary being launched by Blue Ant Media? I sent that because I want to get friend Kieran in here to tell her Stormy Daniels story. She it's a Stormy Daniels story? It's her story to tell. And when I tell you, it is incredible. It is incredible. Oh, that's a teaser. All right. That'll do it for today's show. Just a reminder, all of Grind City Media shows are off tomorrow. We get a little three-day weekend. We will be back on Monday. We'll have the first action of the NBA playoffs. We'll know who's out of those last play-in games. It'll be a good time. Gary Parrish show is up next. I'm going to join GP. Chris Vernon show is after that. And then it will be a long extended weekend. I know it's going to be a rainy weekend, so maybe go to the movies, have a beverage, have a buzz, whatever it is you want to do. We'll see you back on Monday. Bye! Let's get out of here. Well, no, we got a meeting. No, we have two meet. We have back-to-back. -back. Oh, it's another meeting. We scheduled back-to-back -back meetings. Oh. On